Welcome to Zero to Fight Stick, the series that shows you how to build an arcade or fight stick from the ground up. Okay, so we've gotten our option buttons installed, we've gotten our new trick passers installed, we have our action buttons installed, and let's talk about the brains of the operation, your PCB. Now, that's just a glorified term, means printed circuit board, but in this case, consider it like the CPU of your system, because it's going to connect everything together and do all sorts of good stuff. Now, I'm dual modding, so we have both a universal fight board and a retro board. Uh, the, I know the wireless is out, and a lot of people are liking that. Um, sorry, didn't do it. Now, there's only so much room, and originally I thought, well, I'm going to have to lay... This does have this acrylic uh, setup here already, and I got this 3D printed at my local library, like for $1.55 for two of them. And I thought, oh, I'll just put it somewhere like that, double set it, tape down it, and call it good. But then I got to thinking, uh, I have standoffs, because I've done a lot of computer installations over the years, and what if I did that? Well, it turned out I didn't have enough, I didn't have enough in the right size, because these holes on the acrylic are very small. Uh, I'm not sure what the original size is. Uh, I got some replacements, and these are nylon M2, and they just come in a kit for like $8 on Amazon. So I replaced the ones that were here, and then I figured out a method that lets you stack these fairly well. So what we're going to do is first take the Universal Fight Board out. Now, when you're ever you're handling electronics, if you're new to this, just know that you want to try and handle it by the edges and not by the pins, not by, don't touch anything you don't have to. Now I've taken the screws out of here already, so we're ready to mount. And all we need to do is put this down here. You're also going to need your mini screwdriver, otherwise this is really pretty easy. Um, I'm going to take some M2 screws. And I'm going to, I'm going to screw it up. Let's just make that pun and get it out of the way, out of our system. So the front two, the ones that are closest to me, I know I'm working on this backwards from your guys' angle, but I tried to try and let you see this a little bit better. And you don't have to over tighten as usual. Um, just take it easy on these, just enough to get it in. And I tried to find an M2 brass standoff kit that actually had enough thread on these... Uh, come on, focus! <laughs> on these little standoffs that would work. But they only come in 3mm, and that's just not enough. These nylon ones come in 6mm, and that works very nicely. Okay, so now we have our screws. One down here, one down here. This doesn't go anywhere immediately. What's the trick I discovered? Well, you can't just get another set of standoffs and stack it on top. There's just not enough clearance. Uh, you have to have enough room for this unifier kit that is on Arcade Shock, as well as this USB cable. When I try and stack it in there, you have to use the tallest standoffs, and we use the tallest standoffs. You just can't fit it. It doesn't work. Uh, unfortunately. Now, I believe Jason's Customs sells a kit where you can auto just have them sandwiched together and that might fit? I can't, I can't say for sure. I really don't know. Um, but I did find this way and it's a good compromise. I think it works. So what you're going to do is take one of these standoffs to go into your standoff so you can stand off while you stand off. Haha. -ha. We've made the joke, kids. We are, we're done there. You can download this video right now. So get that, you know, about finger tight. You don't want to get, do it super tight. Do the same for the other one here. And you might be guessing already what we're going to be doing. Is we're going to take our retro board out again. Careful how you handle it. Try only to touch the edges. If you have a static, one of those anti-static boards or whatnot, then uh, yeah, use that. 
And instead of trying to, whoops, I had some screws here with little plastic washers on them. Instead of trying to mount it on top like this, which would be nice, but I just can't get it to work. Not with the cables and so We're just going to mount it a little bit forward, like so. So all we need to do, let's go ahead and pre-mount our screws and washers. I was really hesitant about these nylon guys, but they seem pretty up and up. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. You know, if they had brass ones, I'd definitely go for those, but just can't have everything we want. And all we have to do is lock them down. One. I'm not going to super tighten that yet. I want to get this in. Oh, come on. All right. And you might notice underneath it might start spinning or what have you. Just kind of get your fingers in there and hold it down so you can get it as reasonably tight as you can. Okay. Hey, look at that. It's not going anywhere soon. Um, there might be something you can get to kind of stand that up, but as uh, far as I'm concerned, that looks good to me. I might do some tightening and fidgeting with it later, but just uh, let's go over installing the connector kit. What we want to do is there's a USB, uh, it's really what it is, uh, connector cable, and you'll see that it has red, white, green, and black cables. The red needs to go on pin one. Come on. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It needs to go like that. Just give it a little support while you connect it. Make sure it doesn't tilt over or something. Because um, this reads ground, D plus, D minus, and VDD 5 volt. Usually, if you connect them the same way, it doesn't matter. Um, however, red is usually indicates you know, power flow, so that's how we want to go with it. And there's one element. Now there's this this guy. And if you are an old time computer tech, you're like, oh my gosh, ribbon cable, really? That's like, it's not quite as big as floppy cable, but it's close. Um, and there's a little board. So you, all you want to do, it'll say 2P MUX and JP3, JP2, JP1. I connect JP1 to the retro board. And as long as you're consistent with how, where the right, red stripe goes, you're fine. My inclination is that you'll see on the board it says 1 and 2 on this side that I'm pointing to. Uh, might be reversed again because of the angle. And 1, 2 on the Brooks Fighting Board, the Universal. It might be different on some of the other Brooks Fighting Boards if you're trying to dual mod with that. Um, so just put that down and actually I probably should start from the bottom now you can finagle this a little bit but and when you're pushing don't try and ram it too hard that's no fun for anybody that sounds wrong doesn't it okay. anyway I'll cut out for a bit, get it connected, and then come right back. Welcome back to Zero to Fight Stick, the series that shows you how to build your own arcade stick or fight stick. Okay, let's talk about how to effectively dual mod these two brick boards. You have the Universal Fight Board down here, Tilt it up a little bit down here and the retro board which we've kind of hovered over top of it Now there is a unifier kit. That's something I bought from arcade shock and I mounted it to this guy here So what I did was just take some I drilled through the plastic made some pretty small holes and then Use some brass computer standoffs screwed them in and then on top just some regular case screws So now we've got this set up 
However, where do we want to put this? Because I was originally going to try and mount it over here, but there's no way I'll reach from the magenta from there. Uh, so what I came up with was <clears throat> if I slide it in here, right underneath, it's, it will reach everything I need it to. So that's what we're going to go with. But how do we lock that down? Well, we're going to use Velcro for this instance. Uh, you could use glue, you could use whatever, you could almost just leave it there. It it's, stays in remarkably well. But I did the fuzzy side here and a, uh, the hook side on the case there. Um, you can buy Velcro in nice big rolls like this. I used Ultramate Heavy Duty and this is 10 inch or 10 feet worth. You don't need that much, of course, but eh, it comes in handy elsewhere, of course. Um, then I just cut it down the middle to fit the application here. So we're going to go ahead and just show you. All you need to do is just stick that on there, and we're good. All right. And then we want to just take the other side. get that on the bottom. I know it's possible to see, but I gotta have two fingers here, so or two hands. You know. Ten fingers, two hands. It works pretty well. And once you get that in, you'll be ready to slide it in. Okay. Now, on this board, you'll see that there's JP3, JP2, and JP1, um, and you'll want to orient it in the way that works for you the best. So, I'm going to turn it this way, slide it in as best I can. I might have to hook it. <laughs> This Velcro is strong, I'm not going to lie. There we go. Just kind of, if I do a flip like that over the retaining screw, it works pretty well. Okay. I should have taken this off before, but there is this USB connector, and I think we've talked about it in past episodes, but since we're kind of doing it all in one, let's do it here. The black wire will be on ground for both of these. Just so you can see. So it'll black, green, white, red. And I just threaded it underneath the retaining or the um, mounting plate. But there's two other parts, and they're well, the same part, are these ribbon cables. So with ribbon cables, used to be we use something like this for hard drives and things. Told you I'm old. And you notice there's a red stripe on it. Typically, we point that at pin one. So on these boards, pin one is on this side, not this side. And I'm just gonna, all you do, line it up and give a little bit of pressure and it should slot in. So we'll do the same for the UFB down here. It's probably better to start with the UFB since it's a little out of the way. It'll be annoying. And there you go. Now you can line it up the other way uh, as long as it's lined up similar way on the jumper board. Okay. Once you've got these on, you're just going to attach them to attach the UFB to JP3 and the retro to JP1. Uh, what we'll do then in another episode is take this the 20 pin harness that I've sleeved and you connect that to the middle connector and you're set to go. Alright, so that should show you how to connect your retro board and UFB together if that's the setup you have. I know a lot of you are probably just using a either the UFB or the PS4 audio or you just got a single retro board but if you are dual modding like me hopefully this helps you out. Um, keep in mind you want to put, mount that unifier board somewhere where 
it can get to everything. Other one, I wanted to mount it, like I said, I wanted to mount it over here, but without an extension, there's no way I could get it to connect to my joystick. Um, hope that helps. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and see you next episode.